What's up guys? Today's lesson is going to be on the holy being of the ocean, the sea angel. Sea angels are any species that belong to the clade Gymnosomata, but the most well known are those in the family Clionidae, specifically the genus Clione. Fun fact, they're actually a type of enemy in my favorite mobile game, the Battle Cats, with all their variant names being based on the genus Clione in some way. Now if I asked you to imagine a sea angel, the image that comes to mind is probably the species Clione limacina, and it just so happens to also be the one we'll be talking about today. It gets its common name sea angel often mixed up with the sea butterfly, which is a completely different sea creature, looks completely different too. So if anyone calls it a sea butterfly, you can bully them. Cause you know, they're stupid. But anyway, let's get started with their physical characteristics. Sea angels are a type of sea snail with a very distinguishing feature, their wings. Of course, these aren't real wings like birds have, but instead are only wing-like structures called parapodia. They actually used to be the foot muscle of land snails long ago, but through evolution, it became the wings we distinguish them by, so it's kind of like they have feet for wings. Could you imagine a biblically accurate angel with feet wings? They flap to help them swim through the water, but with how tiny sea angels are, usually being around an inch and rarely up to 3 inches long, they don't move very fast at around 100 millimeters per second. With the gentle flapping of their wings, their slow speed, and openness of the ocean, it really makes them look like they're gracefully flying like angels. The sea angel's body is also gelatinous and mostly transparent, making them even more mystical. It makes sense too considering their clay's name Gymnosomata which means naked body. Scandalous. This transparency allows us to see their internal organs, like their gonads, which are pretty pink and orange. And unlike the sea butterflies people confuse their names with, sea angels don't have a shell and are often bigger, but both of them are sea snails. Although sea angels don't have the longest lives, seeming to have a lifespan of only around two years, they'd still like to live for as long as they can. Unsurprisingly, their transparent bodies are very useful to hide from predators like baleen whales and other fishes, especially because they live in the deep sea where it's already super dark. In addition, those living in Antarctic waters have evolved to produce a chemical compound that other fish don't like a taste of. This might not seem that crazy of a fact, but for mollusks like sea angels, it's actually pretty crazy. Because this is the only instance we know of where their chemical defense is produced by the mollusk itself not by absorption from a food source. As I mentioned earlier, sea angels commonly live in the deep sea around 500 meters deep, but they can live even deeper or much much shallower towards the surface. However, when they're closer to the surface of the ocean, sea angels gain a new predator, now being able to be eaten by birds. They also have a pretty wide geographic range, being most often found in the cold Arctic and Antarctic Ocean all the way to the North Atlantic Ocean closer to the equator. Despite the graceful and heavenly creatures sea angels seem to be, they're a perfect example of how looks can be deceiving. They might look innocent on the outside, but the way they feed is the exact opposite. Even though sea angels are sea snails themselves, they only eat other sea snails, and the Clione limacina species we're talking about is an extremely picky eater. Remember the sea butterflies people confuse with sea angels? Well, the Clione limacina only wants to eat sea butterflies, nothing else. There could be many more types of sea snails around them, but they couldn't care any less. The moment they catch a glimpse of a sea butterfly, this species of sea angel is locked on their prey. Now sea angels can either be ambush predators that wait until a sea snail comes close to strike, or hunting predators that actively hunt them down. But either way, once their prey is seen, that's when the horror is finally revealed. The sea angel's head will open up, and it'll push out six tentacle-like appendages from within called bugle cones to grab onto and capture their prey. Then, using their hooks and teeth radula, the sea angel will pull the sea snail right out of its shell and into its gut. This process can be pretty quick and take as little as 2 minutes, but on the other end, it can also take as long as 45 minutes. Being hunted by something like this is a scenario straight up out of a horror movie. Imagine being able to see the inner organs of a translucent humanoid predator. Upon spotting an unfortunate man as its prey, its head unfolds and opens, revealing tentacle arms that all grasp onto the man. In the middle of its tentacles, multiple hooks appear, 
ripping him from his skin whole and pulling his fleshless body into the creature's own body. Nothing remains. Only a limp pellet with human skin on the ground is all that's left of the human man. Like, dude, that's just terrifying. If I see that, I'm out of there in an instant. I'm not dealing with that. I'm calling the government to nuke the heck out of that thing. No chances are being taken. <clears throat> anyway, I'm gonna get back to talking about the actual sea angel. Even though sea angels don't have shells, when they're first born, the baby sea angels actually do have them. It's only as they age and eventually undergo metamorphosis where they lose their shells and transition into their adult forms we normally see. As for the reproduction, sea angels are hermaphrodites, meaning they have both male and female reproductive parts and can switch sexes. When it's time to mate with each other, the pair of sea angels engage in a mating ritual, appearing to look like a beautiful dance. The couple will remain locked together as they swirl throughout the water, doing so for several hours and fertilizing each other. And after fertilization is complete, the sea angel will then release its eggs in a free-floating round mass, beginning the next generation of sea angels. We might not have a conservation status for sea angels, but we at least know that they are not extinct. Though unfortunately, however, there are threats to their lifestyles. With ocean acidification and increasing water temperatures, sea angels can be left with not much food to eat. Sea butterflies and other sea snails they eat have super thin shells made from calcium carbonate. And as a result of ocean acidification, they can have trouble growing their shells with a lack of calcite. And in more extreme cases, their shells can even be dissolved in overly acidic waters. This directly threatens the populations of sea butterflies, therefore threatening the populations of sea angels that feed on them. Other than that though, they seem to be doing okay. Anyway, that's about it for today's lesson. Subscribe for more fish facts, and I'll see you next time.